afternoon, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to the Woodstock of clean energy. Uh, I don't think I've ever been to a conference with the diversity of clean energy and sustainability activities and companies that I see here today. I want to be very brief because I know that you guys have a lot of very important networking to do. Uh, fortunately, there's no alcohol, so I can speak a little bit longer than, uh, than if it were later in the day. Uh, but really, I want to just emphasize a couple things. Uh, I think the first thing which I think, as Scott mentioned, it is clear as day to me, is that clean energy is ready for launch. After more than three decades of incredibly hard work funding America's best innovators, best entrepreneurs, uh, most forward-leaning financiers, tapping into the truly American ethos of entrepreneurship and innovation, we're now at a point where a wide variety of the clean energy technologies that we've all been working on for a long time are ready for launch. And I just want to talk about a, a few examples. But what that, where that really puts us, in my opinion, is that it's no longer a question for me of whether we're going to get there. It's are we going to get there in time, and are we going to get there in a way where we're going to, bear, where, where we're going to harvest the fruit of the trillion dollar economic opportunity that is before us. As Scott mentioned, more than $260 billion invested last year in the clean energy sector. And in the next five to ten years, a panoply of clean energy technologies are going to go from uh, almost cost competitive to directly cost competitive without subsidies. And that's when we get into the trillions. And so it's, it's really a stark choice that we have to make. Do we want to step up, make the appropriate investments here in the last five, five yards towards the end zone and make sure that we derive the economic benefit of the transition to a clean energy economy? Or are we going to walk away and cede global leadership to other nations like China, India, South Korea, and Germany that are going big to try to get this? And so just to give you a few examples of, of amazing accomplishments we've had, we've seen tremendous gains in fuel economy uh, over the last few decades. The investments that ERE has made over the last 30 years, about a billion dollars into cutting edge combustion uh, R&D, have resulted in $70 billion of net benefit, uh, both economically and environmentally. That's a 70 to 1 ratio. In electric vehicles, uh, we went from these things being a curiosity uh, some time ago to now, we're seeing them be almost directly cost competitive. Over the last four years, together we've reduced the cost of batteries by 50%. And an innovation just made last year uh, with a startup in Argonne National Labs by ARPA-E and EERE together holds promise to drop the cost by another 40%. Uh, and at that point, uh, electric vehicles will become directly cost competitive with, uh, with uh, the standard gasoline vehicles we're driving today. So it's in our sights. We've seen a tripling of electric vehicle sales in the last year, up to 50,000. Uh, this next year, we're going to see 15 new plug-in hybrid models, uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle models on the market. Uh, and so we're seeing revolutionary change in electric vehicles, and that's coming down the pipe. In renewable power, as Scott mentioned, we've made tremendous strides. Uh, we've seen a doubling of renewable power on the grid from wind uh, and geothermal and solar over the last four years. The president has laid the goal out for another doubling by 2020. Last year, there was more wind power added to the grid than any other source of electricity. Over the last seven years, we've doubled the amount of domestic content in all the wind farms in the United States. Uh, so we made tremendous progress there. Uh, we've also made revolutionary progress in solar. Uh, with Scott being a real pioneer in the field, over the last 30 plus years, uh, this was a fact that I read in the Wall Street Journal of, of all places, more than 99% reduction in the cost of solar. More than 80% re reduction in the cost of solar uh, modules in the last four years. Uh, and I just saw that uh, in Arizona, there's a PPA for a sol uh, utility scale solar project at less than six cents per kilowatt hours. Uh, for, for kilowatt hours. So solar is almost here. Uh, and we've seen similar gains in efficiency. Uh, our appliance standards program uh, allow, has allowed customers uh, like yourself to save billions of dollars every year on energy costs, uh, simultaneously making sure that we're all buying high quality, high efficiency appliances uh, that actually advantages high quality producers in the United States. Uh, and, and one last thing I'll mention on the efficiency side is LEDs. Uh, many, uh, many of us have thought of this as a pipe dream uh, more than a decade ago. Now we're seeing LED light bulbs that are 80% more efficient than the light bulbs in our house today for less than $10 per bulb. And uh, I am told by the experts that as we get to $5 to $6 per bulb, which will happen in the next two years, that market will take off into a massive market and we'll see widespread adoption of, of LEDs. And so across the board, we're seeing tremendous success, but our work is not done. We have to accelerate into the curve here if we want to derive the economic benefit and if we want to address our urgent uh, climate crisis. 
And so going forward, we can't back away. We have to accelerate into the final few laps of this race together. Uh, and so DOE has launched two specific initiatives that I think are, are, are now more important than ever as we are so close to the finish line. The first is a clean energy manufacturing initiative. It's not enough for us to get the technology uh, good enough and cheap enough so that it can get widely adopted. Uh, the American taxpayer expects all this hard work we've done not only to benefit the world and the environment in the world, but also our pocketbooks and our economy. And so uh, going forward, we're going to have a very focused initiative uh, making sure that we are well positioned to win in the, cl in the clean energy economy and the trillions of dollars that are going to be derived there. Uh, and as part of that, uh, EERE will be supporting the President's National Network for Manufacturing Innovation. Uh, with the Department of Defense, we've already put out funds for four of these institutes that are really meant to drive U.S. economic competitiveness across the board, but specifically in clean energy and energy efficiency products. So manufacturing is going to be a major focus and we're looking forward to working with you in this area. The second is, uh, for so long, uh, we, we saw these clean energy technologies, especially, let's say, solar and rooftop and distributed energy technologies, uh, we were so focused on just trying to make them cost competitive. And now, within the next five to 10 years, these are going to be very broadly cost competitive. A lot of these distributed energy technologies, including rooftop solar, including EVs, including demand responsive buildings. And so uh, we're at a point in time where we need to make sure that together uh, all of the stakeholders come together, the utilities, the equipment providers, the nonprofits, the PUCs, uh, the Congress, uh, other officials, the agencies, to make sure that we modernize the grid and democratize the grid so that these low cost, low carbon uh, technologies that we invented here in the United States, as they could become directly cost competitive, can continue to scale. So, and while maintaining a reliable grid, and also making sure that we create the right kind of competitive cost structures so that these technologies can fall into the market naturally. So I think manufacturing and grid integration are two things that we really need to drive together. Uh, and one last pillar I'd say that's going to be very important, especially as a lot of these technologies get towards cost competitiveness, we're finding is finance and soft costs. So as the technology costs go down significantly, uh, we're finding, especially in solar, that we're no longer limited by the technology costs, but by a lot of the paperwork and permitting and finance costs. And so a lot of us in the room are technologists, and we've been driving on this problem, and we've uh, almost succeeded. And so now we've got to bring in some of the, uh, America's best innovators and financiers, entrepreneurs, uh, and government officials to really cut through the red tape, uh, find out ways to lower financing costs, and really you know, go this last lap to get these cost-effective uh, effective clean energy technologies onto the grid and onto our energy infrastructure. And so with that, I want to thank you all for your hard work. We are so close to success. We are making so much progress. We cannot back down. We will not back down. I look forward to working with each and every one of you to make sure that the clean energy economy arrives and arrives in a way that the United States will benefit economically. Thank you very much.